All righty then. Um, <laughs> next on the AEW parade was the match that we had been waiting for. FTR against Punk and a mystery partner. And I wrote, ah, it's not the main event. And I forgot the Texas death match, the main event. But at least we're going to see who the partner is, and they're doing it at the top of the 9 o'clock hour. So that was smart for the ratings. That's probably why they kept people. So anyway, we find out who Punk's partner is. Like Mussolini with Moxley. It's Moxley. So, all right, I say, okay, this is going to be the ultimate challenge. Can FTR and... CM Punk make this guy have a wrestling match. That was the challenge. And they gave this one time, and I'm not going to go through every, every single high point and spot and twist and turn and change in momentum, but Dax and Punk started, and they wrestled. One tackle, drop down, reverse hip toss, kickoff, headlock, take overhead, scissors, kick out. Wrestling. And then Cash comes in, one tackle, drop down, hip toss, arm drag, more wrestling. I'm loving it. And then Moxley comes in, and he does that weird shoulder-dipping, swerving body language. He looks like he's twisting in the wind. Bez from Happy Mondays, yes. I, I don't know that one. But he locked up with Dax, and they actually did some wrestling. It was headlock, takeover, one tackle, drop down, scoop slam, and then big kick, and then another big kick, and another big kick. <laughs> he's sitting Dax there, and he's just hitting the ropes and kicking him in the chest. I guess he's trying. And the, the Punk and Moxley worked well together. He said, Punk did a back slap tag. Now I know what it's like when a child of mine brings home a bad report card. The disappointment. FTR did a little heat spot on Punk's leg and started heat, and they work like heels, and Punk's selling his ass off, but it was just a, a false set of heat because they wanted to give Moxley a comeback and then get the heat on him so Punk could have the last comeback. But as a result, they only got like one minute of heat on Punk's leg, and then when he tagged Moxley, Moxley made a comeback, but there wasn't that much reaction because the heat was so short. And then they go into a four-way, and both the baby faces d did dives, and they all fell down. They went to the break. Somehow, during the break, well, I don't say somehow. They got out there, but during the break, they replayed it on the other side. FTR picks Moxley up and double belly-to-back suplexes him through a table at ringside onto the concrete floor as a heat spot. As a heat he. The referee is counting, and he pops up at nine and rolls in. He beats the count back in. But they start the heat on this fucking guy in a regular tag match by double suplexing him through a table on the concrete. So now he can sell. I, Moxley is hopeless. If If it was FTR's idea, say, hey, we'll start the heat on you by giving you a double back suplex through a table onto the fucking floor. If he had any idea of what the wrestling business was, he would have said, are you out of your mind? Cut me off with a knee to the back and let me fucking sell. But it's all got to be the garbage, indie, modern, outlaw, goofy wrestling. Anyway, at one point, I thought they were going to do, and it's, they still may come back to it, I thought they were going to do some kind of turn with Moxley and Punk because Moxley... Atomic dropped Dax, but Dax reached back. I think that's where he blind tagged, right? And then, but he suplexed Cash and went to the corner for a tag, but Punk wasn't there because he'd been distracted and then nailed off the apron by Dax. So I thought, oh, Moxley's going for the tag. Punk's not there. There's going to be, but they never mentioned it again. Did you see FTR give Moxley the Vegematic? Yes. Just barely. I love you, boys, Dax and Cash. I know you watch the tapes. But there's a reason why that it looked so good when the Midnight Express did it, and one of those reasons was Stan Lane's incredibly deep squat. 
His legs were fucking powerful and he could, and limber, and he could do a deep squat. Also, Moxley's legs were in the wrong place, guys. If you want to go back and look at the tape while I'm saying this, this is all the listeners out there, just talk amongst yourselves for a second. I'm talking to FTR. When you pick Moxley up for the bear hug to squat down and lean him out, his legs went around your back. I've mentioned this before. That's the wrong place. You need to have the guy up in a bear hug like you're going to hold him there for a while, the old spot where you hold the guy there, and he puts his shins, folds them up, and puts them on your thighs. Once you got the guy in the bear hug and his shins are folded up on your thighs, then you squat down as low as you can and lean the guy straight out. And that's why Stan's deep squat came in handy. Because then when Dax would come off with the leg drop, all Cash has to do is let go and Moxley lands flat, falls right out of his arms. Because Moxley's legs were around Cash's back, and then Cash didn't just drop him flat, but stumbled forward onto his knees because he doesn't have that deep squat. It kind of kerflucked it up there and cash should have been a couple of feet farther out and toward his back about a foot so when dax comes straight off he's going straight with the leg drop toward the opposite turnbuckle because that's that straight line that's when you know if you try to jump off with a leg drop a little bit toward the left side you're getting off and the momentum's changing. Does this make any sense verbally to you Brian last? Absolutely. This is great stuff. I love when you give advice. So, well, it's not advice. I invented the goddamn thing. It's not advice. It's just telling you. This is not a fucking debatable thing. This is how you do the fucking thing, and that's how it works out. Instead, like I said, legs around the back. It brought both of them forward. Cash stumbled, positioning, whatever, but they were trying. Then Dax missed the elbow off the top rope, and Moxley clotheslined Cash and hit a shitty hot tag because the heels were tagging too almost simultaneously. He didn't lay there and sell and let the fucking heels tag so the fresh heel comes in and tries to go after him and then he evades that guy and then both the heels are in when he tags, dives and tags Punk so that Punk can come in and both the heels are ready to feed. But it was a simultaneous tag and I give up on hot tags. The people popped anyway because it was Punk and this set of heat had lasted a while but I'm tired of trying to advise people on how to do a hot tag when nobody is getting it anymore. And it's fucking ridiculous. Having said that, Punk made a comeback while still selling his leg from the brief heat from earlier, and it was great. Because now you'd, okay, we know why the guy's not just 100% now. And then they even did a doomsday device, Punk and Moxley, which it was, it was a two count but they they got it in. Here's another thing. Cash gives Moxley a spinning DDT on the floor. <laughs> and he's he's going to be back up in a second. You can't kill Moxley. Uh, they hit Punk with the bell and a brain buster and got a two count. Then they got more heat on Punk and hit the big rig on him, but Moxley saved. Then everybody's selling. And we got the double one-two in the ring with all four guys. This has been a good tag match, except for the Picadillos that I've just pick, picked out. This is far and away one of Moxley's best matches he's ever had because they weren't fighting on the floor. There wasn't all the goddamn plunder in the ring. He was actually wrestling. And they gave them time so that they could do what they needed to do without rushing through it. And there was no trampoline business going on. I'm picking at nits because... If it was the grade schoolers and the pudding gang out there, I wouldn't give a shit because they're hopeless. But since these guys, except for Moxley, are all top fucking guys and some of the best in the world at what they do, I'm giving constructive criticism. So it was a great match up to that point, especially for AEW, because there was more professionalism than normal. And then everything started going sideways when poor Tully got in the ring. Oof. Because Punk gets a submission on Cash, and the referee, Aubrey, is with the other two guys, and Tully rolls in, takes his suit jacket off, and starts swinging and swatting 
punk with his suit jacket. He didn't just do it once to distract him. He does it several times. And I'm... I'm at a loss. If, if, if punk has a submission hold on my guy, the referee's back is turned and the referee's busy with the other people in the match, and I'm the manager, wouldn't I come in and haul off and football kick punk straight in the face to get him to let go of my fucking guy? Or would I take off my jacket and swat him in the head with it? I don't know what this was supposed to be because, yes, punk, let go of the hold and stood up and there Aubrey turns around and there's Aubrey is standing there staring at Tully in the ring, staring at punk. So why did they distract the referee for her to just turn around and see the manager still in the ring? And then punk goes to pick Tully up for, well, Tully swings, punk blocks punch and goes to pick him up in the fireman's carry for the GTS. But did you see what went wrong? I'm sure you could pick it apart from what actually went wrong, but I obviously I saw what happened where he oh. he shouldn't have, I mean, they shouldn't have done this to begin with, but whatever. <sighs> well, what happened was when Punk been, blocked the punch and went to Fireman's Carry Tully and pick him up for the go to sleep, Tully has not been picked up in a while. And he was so, and you, you guys, you can all go back and watch the video. This is exactly what it was. Tully hadn't been picked up in a while. I'm sure he was eager to show that he still got it. When Punk bent over, Tully jumped before Punk was lifting. So what the effect that that has, and you can see this on the video, is that, and I don't care how strong you are, when you're off balance, this is going to happen. I've seen this happen to the road warriors before. When I bend over to, to pick the guy up over my shoulder in a fireman's carry, if I've just bent over and he jumps up without me starting to lift first, then he's jumping in the air before I'm standing up. That means when I start standing up, he's coming down. Now I'm bent over. That means 200 plus pounds, whatever the fuck Tully weighs, is coming downwards on the back of my head before I've had a chance to get my legs under me and stand up, and it almost took fat Punk face first to the mat instead of him being able to pick Tully up. Well, then he realizes what has happened, and he has to. he's staggering, but he's trying to get under Tully because he's got to get his legs under him to pick him up because they're still off balance, and now Tully is holding on like a monkey fucking a football. And finally, he got up under him and gave Tully the go to sleep. But this, this is why I'm not managing either. Tully's almost 70. I'm 60. We don't need to be doing that shit. I mean, everybody wanted to see, you know, a legend when he's 40 or a legend when he's 50. But it comes a point, we talked about the Sheik earlier. We talk about what Vince McMahon looks like. It's not doing your the memories that people have any favors when they see guys going out and being involved in in these things. But anyway, so go to sleep on Tully. But right at that point, Cash rolls Punk up a two count. That might have it was a nice little false finish there. But then suddenly, Punk and Moxley both <laughs> just spun FTR up and hit both their finishes on both Dax and Cash at the same time. It covers simultaneously one, two, three. They beat both of them right in the middle of the ring. So again, if FTR had come in and got the Keith Lee treatment and got win after win on television a year and a half ago and established themselves as what they are, the best tag team in the business, and then won the championship, which they did, and then defeated the Young Bucks the first time around and made the Bucks chase for it, then they would have been established. But instead, they come in, they get a couple of wins, they get the belts, they're mostly on YouTube, they get beat by the Young Bucks, the EVPs, then they turn heel, the Hardly Boys do, to take FTR's place, and FTR never gets in the ring with them again because they were so jealous. I'm talking about the Hardly Boys now. They were so jealous 
that a lot of people were saying FTR were the best in the world. They brought them in specifically to beat and bury them and then switch heel and take their spot. And then a year later, every three months or so, we get to see FTR have a tag team match on television. In this case, the baby faces beat up their manager and pin both of them cleanly in the middle of the ring at the same time. Why didn't you piss in their mouths while they were down there? It's not Punk and Moxley's fault. FTR should already be over because they should have been booked properly. And then if they're a joy to work with. I'm sure everybody in the company wants to work with FTR because they know that they'll be taken care of and not get hurt and not have to go through foolish, silly cartoon bullshit. But it was a great tag team match. And Moxley was even bearable. And the finish would have been great if FTR had come in and gotten over or been pushed a year ago and now could do this and still keep their heat. But they didn't and they weren't, so they can't. Closing thoughts on this match. I liked it. Good way to use Moxley. Keep him out of a singles match. Put him in there with Punk. Also, a minor thing, but I like the fact that they established that Punk isn't Mr. Popularity in the dressing room. Who's he going to get to be his partner? He's getting along with Sting and Darby. We know that relationship. It's played out on TV. He has put over Moxley. He did that promo when Moxley went to rehab, talking about Moxley. So it's established that he at least thinks about him and cares about him. So it makes sense that they would team up. I know it's a minor thing, but I like that when you stop and you think about it, Bill Watts style. How did these two get here? Why are they teaming up? It makes some sense. Tully shouldn't be. We've been saying it for months now. Tully shouldn't be a manager. He can't do a good promo anymore. He can't do anything physical anymore. It's almost like Jim Hurd knew. The abilities are gone. No, I was 33 I years know, ago. I'm joking, I'm I joking. Know. Other than that, and with FTR, I'm happy we get to see them have matches. It is no coincidence that the guys who work with them end up having really well-thought-out matches that are good. I could do without the table spot in the middle of the match, or even the ring bell, to be honest with you. But everyone knows what it is. They got hogan They got brought in by the guys looking to beat them, just to shut internet fans up. Everyone knows what everyone knows what's up. And to look, the only person that could change things is Tony Khan. And Tony Khan has, for whatever reason, been happy with the way FTR is booked. Go figure. Who knows? Well, no, up. but also he has he can't tell anybody what to do. He has no authority because he has no balls, because he's not in charge. He's the boss. He pays everybody, but he's not in charge. If he was in charge, well, if he was in charge, it wouldn't probably be any better because he doesn't know what to do. But fortunately, he's not in charge. He can't tell anybody what to do because they won't listen to him because he's a fucking mark. That's why they need a fucking authority figure that knows what to do and that gives a shit enough to tell them. 